smells like something's on fire. What's up everybody? Today I'm doing a, hold up. Sorry, I'm still learning about getting light and right and stuff. Well, I got a haircut. Um, but today I am at this little, this little mechanic shop. He said he's uh, fixing to have some, some new tenants or whatever uh, move in here. So he's trying to fix a problem. There's a swell right here behind me that runs, runs back that way. That's not really draining. So this is a swell. It's, it's, it's decent right up through here. I know you probably can't tell on the camera, but when you get right here, there's a little berm right here to keep the water in this swell going back that way. And looks like somebody with a bobcat coming here and cut the berm out for some reason or another i don't know so i'm gonna have to cut cut a little bit of a uh, little bit of dirt out build this up and uh the reason he's wanting to do it is because i don't know why people people do this crap all the time i don't know why instead of buying 20 loads of dirt and raise something up a house a shop whatever it is raise it up a foot people build crap way too low i mean as you can tell water all this water comes off of this parking lot down this swell comes from this property right here this whole property through the woods is draining this way it comes right in here and floods the shop i don't understand there's a asphalt sidewalk right here so i can't really cut a swell going around this side so i'm just gonna have to halfway do it just because the dang thing is too low it's in a hole once you get 10 foot past the shop over there it's gone up another four or five inches so this thing's just in a hole instead of doing it right whenever they built this thing they did it halfway i can't stand when people do this jump but anyway my job is too wet but anyway my job's too wet it had on that trail uh, we must have got an inch or two of rain within like 30 minutes because i've never seen it flood but on the trail it had like two foot of water across a bunch of it so um we didn't have nothing to do there the ponds are wet so we're doing this instead it probably won't take but hour or two couple hours and i got a mat seed and mat this swell over here so i'm gonna get started
like something's on fire. All right, so what turned into a quick one hour project just turned into all day thing. Um, as you can see, I, I worked for maybe like three or four minutes and uh, then started smelling something smelt like the dang bobcat was on fire. And uh, I'll show you what's, what's wrong. I, I don't know if you'll be able to see it. So right below that spring looking thing, there is a wheel. It's an idler pulley right where the light is on. Looks like there's a little rust spot and then a slick spot. This has happened on this has happened on our last bobcat or maybe even this one and we fixed it. So the way this thing runs is off of the so the motor spins and off of the crank pulley, which is the main main pulley on the engine for anybody that don't know about engines. Off of the crank pulley, there is a big flywheel and it has a belt on it, which spins a hydraulic pump, which then supplies all the hydraulics to the machine. Well, that idler pulley is on that belt to keep it tight. And like I say, either this machine, we've had three of these Bobcats and I can't remember, but about a year ago, this machine or the last one we had, I don't know, sorry for repeating myself, but we had to replace that thing and you can't get to it for nothing. And it had, it chunked the belt off. It destroyed the belt on the job. So, I mean, you know, other than call Bobcat and wait two or three days, well, I did it and it was me and Brian did it and it was a pain in the butt. So we said, if we ever got to do it again, you got you about got to have special tools to do it you can't really get back there to it as you can see and uh so we said if we ever do it again we ain't doing it we're taking it somewhere and let a mechanic fix it so i'm going to halfway knock this down as fast as i can take this thing to monroe which is i don't know 20 25 minutes from here and see if they have a loaner hopefully they have one and then pick it up, bring it back while they fix this thing. So that's how, you know, it's good for me because I, I mean, it's not good for me, but me not owning this company, I don't have to deal with it. You know, if it, it's Friday, if it, if they don't have a loan or nothing too bad, it's not really hurting me any, but that's where not being an owner operator and not owning your own company is good in this line of work because these machines do break and you know i don't have to deal with it i don't have to pay for it so you know a lot of people want to get into this stuff and do it on their own which is good i mean it really is i think i might do that one day if you know if the good lord keeps on blessing me and opportunity comes up but um yeah right now for me it's like I ain't got to worry about nothing. He said he's got to have this Bobcat Monday. So, you know, for me, sorry, but it's not my problem. I don't have to worry about it. I'm not going to worry about it this weekend if it don't work out or not going to have to pay for it. So that aspect is nice working for a company. Other aspects would be nice working for yourself. But, you know, it's always a give and take. And, uh yeah I, i'm probably just wasting y'all's time because everybody everybody that watches this knows what i'm saying but you know the grass always looks greener but uh yeah so i'm gonna i'm gonna knock this down real quick load this puppy up hopefully without chunking the belt off of it and then i'm headed to monroe hopefully my truck last time i pulled this bobcat my truck broke down it only it broke a turbo clamp so hopefully it'll it'll do all right and we'll uh hopefully pick y'all back up in an hour or two if we get a new machine so i just went and picked up dropped off the bobcat and picked it up um as you can see behind me i got an open cab t66 which is like a two sizes down from the 770 it's 
got a straight bucket on it, doesn't have a four in one either. But our wood yard um, over here, they have a T66, it's closed cab with the four in one bucket. And I kind of need that bucket, so I'm taking, I'm not far from it here, I'm 10 minutes from it and 30 minutes from my job. So I'm taking this machine, gonna drop it off over here because they use forks 99% of the time. And they don't, you know, they load up the sawmill and unload, you know, uh, post or whatever they're cutting. So they don't really use it just a whole lot. So I'm taking this thing, gonna drop it off over there at the yard and then pick that one up, put the, put the bucket on it and then take it back. So it's 10, 10 after 10 now and it, uh, I don't know what time it broke, probably, I don't know, probably 8.30, nine, well, maybe nine o'clock when I left there, so it's just turned to, I would've got off probably 11.30, but now I'll probably get off at 2.30 or three, which is still fine. I'm not, I'm not mad, I don't really care. I ain't got nothing else to do, so, um, yeah, I'm gonna do this real quick and get back over there, I'm gonna start back on that thing again. So, <clears throat> I just got back over here and ate lunch uh, right before I got started. It's probably 12 o'clock now. Um, this is the one I picked up from the lot. It's got this bucket. They they never use the four-in-one bucket. They do, uh, like, fill sandbags and stuff, like big one-yard sandbags, and they use a straight bucket so they don't have to get in and out and uh, hook up hydraulic lines. So, yeah, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna get started, unload this thing, get started.
if that's the case, I'll be done with it. I gotta clean up just a little bit. And then uh, I'm gonna fix it in, in front of the door, in front of the shop. got about a percent and a half to about a percent to a percent and a half of fall which is if you don't know percentage one percent of fall is one one tenth of fall every ten linear feet what you usually want to have is two two percent in a minimum but to do that I would have to go back here and I'd have to go back here and probably cut a foot, foot and a half out back here. And honestly, I don't know if I could get that low down there. So I'm just working where it, where it tied in. Um, it'll grain fine. You know, if you get a big rain, it's, it's still gonna grain. It, it might, after rain drain, it'll drain slow, but it's got fall, it's not flat. So that's all, it's about a percent and a half. So it, it's decent. I've done them worse. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I guess that's done. I'm gonna pull these, this edge down right here and try to get that little bit of dirt in and just clean up. And then do that little bit there and wait. Brian's bringing uh, matting and, and uh, grass seed. And we're gonna see this thing will be, be going home. All right, everybody, so it's done. Um, it really, I mean, it really wasn't but about 30 minutes worth of work, maybe, maybe an hour, but it turned into an all day thing. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I guess I'll make a video of this just because the other bobcat broke down. Oh, God. I wouldn't normally, I mean, because I really only work for, like I say, probably about, I don't know, maybe an hour. But anyway, uh, I cut this little ditch. I cut a little swell in front of this thing that really, I mean, ain't a whole lot you can do because there's a sidewalk going across. And I uh, scraped up some stone and put back on this dirt and slicked it off. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's pretty pretty much it. If you watch to this point, thanks. I really appreciate it. Um, there'll be more videos of plenty of other stuff to do. So... Thanks, everybody.